Let's stay in Canberra and catch up with a politician I don't think has been invited for a visit to China just recently. That is One Nation leader Pauline Hanson. Good to talk to you again, Pauline. So much we could talk to you about. I'm just going to get you quickly on that New South Wales election. The overall percentage for One Nation was low, but you were very influential in some key seats, taking votes away from the Libs in in seats that they lost. Do Do you regret you weren't able to run in more seats? Um, Chris, that election was run by Mark Latham in New South Wales and the um, state executive down there, so I had nothing to do with it. I would have dearly loved to have seen the 93 seats covered, as we do in in Queensland, um, when we run the election up here. But anyway, it was their decision. Of course, in the seats we averaged around about uh, 10 to 12 per cent in the seats that we did run. But remind people, we only stood in 17 seats out of the 93, so hence the low um, percentage that we got in that election. Well, interesting insight there into how much uh, influence you have on the New South Wales uh, One Nation operation. And in federal politics, uh, tell me about this safeguards mechanism. This is a big deal with, and this is one of the first times I've seen Labor doing a big deal with the Greens. Obviously some other front benches involved, but this is going to have a huge impact on our economy as they try and get big industries to meet emissions reductions goals. It is, Chris, and it's going to affect about 215 big industries and cause the emissions and, and what they put out. And then if it do, if they go over their emissions, then, they're, you know, the cost is going to be to, uh, to these companies. And I tell you what, Chris, they won't stay here. They'll shut down and they'll go overseas. With the rising cost in electricity, plus this emissions target they're, they're setting, and it's, again, the Greens in bed with the Labor. The Greens are directing the Labor to policy, not the Labor government. And this happens all the time on the floor of Parliament with the support of David Pocock as a calling doormat Dave, that I don't feel that he does his complete research on this to understand what he's doing, what he passes in the Parliament. But anyway, that's him as the Senator for um, Canberra. But um, it's, it's really get, will impact on our industries and manufacturing. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see about the impact, but it's, it's got to be significant, you would think. Common sense tells you that. I just want to get your thoughts also on another issue where you've been pretty much a lone voice, and that is these changes that are being planned to the family court arrangements that are going to get rid of the presumption of shared parenting. And you've pointed out how men are likely to lose out in these changes, and you've got support now from a, from a former family court judge. Yes, from Professor Richard um, Chisholm, who was in the family court for from 1993 to 2004, and he said, if you actually bring this in, you're actually going to take it back to the time when women were given more primacy over court battles. Men will suffer because of this, Chris. And, you know, the activists in the, viol- in the domestic violence activists, they want to get rid of the um, shared parenting responsibility because they say that violent perpetrators will hold control over the family and the children. Chris, these are important facts, and this came out of the Joint Select Committee that I actually got up in the family law. 90% of parents alleged child sexual abuse by the other parent in contested hearings from 2012 to 2019 were the mother. In 90% of these hearings, the judge found no risk of sexual harm to the child or children. In 25% of these cases, the allegations were found to be deliberately misleading. In another 46% of these cases, the allegations were mistaken. And in 88% of these cases, the allegations were not believed by the judge. And in 62% of these cases, the judge awarded shared parental risk responsibility or sole responsibility to the parent against which the allegations were made. And the last one, in 66% of these cases, orders were made increasing parenting time with the parent against which the allegations were made. These figures aren't given out to the public. There is no reason why they need to change this. Men have a hard enough time as it is and they, you know, domestic violence against them is 25% of domestic violence is attributed by women to the men. So let Let's look at the interests of the child and another report that came from North Indeed. Dakota yeah, we, and the Oregon University yeah. say that the child is best to have that, that connection with the With both parents and that's, that's what we all used to assume. Correct. Yeah, That's why we'll keep our focus on this issue. Thanks for joining us, Pauline. I appreciate it. Pauline Hanson, the leader of One Nation.